What is up, down, and sideways, you beautiful individuals? It is League Unlocked. That is Mark. I am Eric for what is probably, most likely, potentially, the last Global Power Rankings. Before we do the big, you know, top 20 rankings for the World Championship, already you're seeing a lot of these teams haven't uh, played this week or in the last couple of weeks, but this week we still had plenty of shakeup in the top 20. Oh, this might be the last of the global power rankings before you start getting into the world's power rankings, player rankings, all those goodies that we got waiting for us before the big event. But yes, we do have some shakeups and some major shakeups coming through in this top 20 list before we get to those important events, playoffs, gauntlets, all those things on the horizon. Let's dive into the list. And you start, as is tradition, towards the end of the split as... Some of the minor regions are often a few weeks behind. PSG Talon, you remember them. They always crack onto this list at some point. They bump out RNG, who hasn't played in a while. It's a 14-1 and start for them in the regular season. Business as usual. We got Maple back over to the PCS. I'm just waiting to see the boys at Worlds again. Oh, my goodness. Maple, he must be treating the boys out to dinner a couple of nights on that big old TSM credit card that we're carrying on through. <laughs> Happy to see Maple thriving once again in this region. A very welcomed return in the way that he has been able to play is that Maple that we've talked about in the past. That type of leader, that type of player. It's going to be a thing to see whether that is still stacking up on the international stage or if it is just one of those ones that is dominating in the PCS. But for right now, I think PSG is one of those ones climbing into that radar of a lot of people because of the time of the year. And we always say that about them and usually the Marines from the VCS. And it's kind of hit or miss how they actually perform at Worlds. But business as usual domestically for them. Heretics and EG swapping spots. EG gets the dominant Game 5 win against TSM. Team Heretics have the heartbreaking loss to the season. And uh, if you want to shed a single tear, watch Yankos' last interview on the year. It's tragic. I hope this guy's on the broadcast in some way for Worlds. They got to do it. Oh, man. That is the transition that I know that I think, you know, it kind of bittersweet to talk about it because it does mean that we are nearing what will be the end of Yankos's long and storied career but this is one of those transitions that we love to talk about where you would think that the type of you know personality and character that he could bring to that broadcast not even just an LEC type of specific one we're talking again more like on a world's type of stage bring that type of uh, stage for him that would be fantastic now you look at the heretics and you say a little bit too late for this team, what they were able to change, what they were able to get done in the LEC, but still a lot of hopeful things, a lot of positive things for brand new organization, debut year in the LEC, good for them. And then on the Evil Geniuses, yes, they get it done in that clutch. Game five, where they obliterate TSM and take that commanding win in the series. Some weaknesses to see in there for sure from this Evil Geniuses side, but overwhelmingly, the positive is when Jojo Pyun's popping off, and when Mr. Unforgiven, how did this guy go under the radar for so long? Getting that next that next opportunity and thriving here in the LCS. And obviously, Revenge got a highlight on that TSM series specifically as well. First Ooh. of many broken Aatrox games that we're going to see over the last chunk of time in 2023. A pair of LEC squads ahead of them, Fnatic and Excel. Obviously, these guys went head-to-head. -head. Excel came out on top, so they're ahead of them. And... It was two, game one and two were dominant in the way of XL, but games three and four were a whole lot closer and still current form fanatic. You feel pretty good about them going into the season finals, and obviously you do about as, uh, as Excel as well. Unbelievable that we're talking about an Excel that was able to finish as poorly as they did, finding a way to climb all the way to that LEC Grand Summer uh, final event that we're going to have here to sort out the LEC's world contenders. Really impressed by what we have seen from the both of these two squads. I think Fnatic, even in the loss, you did see those signs of that sunshine that comes through when we do talk about them playing well and popping off. Just not enough when you're looking back at the side of XL and what they were able to do in this series and really rise up for what they could do in that series before, of course, the juggernaut G2 will make their appearance. And it, it feels sad again because you have heretics on this list 
and all these other LEC teams that are going to be playing at the season finals, not Heretics, but current form. I don't think anyone would argue that Heretics are ahead of SK, BDS, some of these other squads that will be taking place, but when you're bad for two straight splits, that's just how this format works. That's the penalty that comes with that type of performance throughout the split. It's one of those things that I think is going to be examined when we look back on this year, on this change and experiment for the LEC, and maybe you tweak it here or there. Right now, that's the way that things go. Now we get to the one everyone wants on this list. I know you've been seeing them on the list, waiting for us to talk about them. And honestly, before this Kwong Dong series, I was ready to kick T1 out of the top 20. Get him out of here. Lose to DRX. Slam by KT. But then you get the message. You see it. Oh, my God. The helicopter's landing in. Faker jumps right out. The legend returns. And even more than I was expecting, unbelievable how instantly different the other four members of T1 look when Faker returns. I, I was expecting a lot, and it exceeded my expectations. They look like totally different players. The door was just being slammed to the top 20, and Mr. Faker holds the door and says, excuse me, it's time for the T1 return. Yes, he steps back into the lineup, and yes, it is the full T1 looking just like the T1 that has been a mainstay at the top of these rankings, of these type of lists, the way that they played, the confidence in all these members, and the Faker effect in full effect even if it is just the Kwang Dong freaks which again let's keep in mind here nine game losing streak at this point so certainly not like it's the stiffest or hardest test in this competition might have been one that with Poby that you do fall to if you are T1 I mean they're you losing the DRX so you'll take you anything the, and it's the as you mentioned you look at the other four members and how they were able to play yes Zeus gets this Aatrox, which buckle up, we're gonna get ready to see all the way through with this gauntlet and worlds and whatever, the way that he is buffed up and he plays well, but it really is about owner and Kyria. Look at those two players and the difference in how they're able to engage and what happened for them. And I think that you can tell that there is a difference in that shot calling from Faker. Game two, right after the uh, you know, fight around Dragon, they turned that into about three turrets and everything else. And that is definitely a change in the macro that we are seeing from them compared to what they were without Faker. The GOAT is back. All you have to do is look at Guma after game two, the win. Find someone who looks at you the way Guma was looking at Faker after that game, like, blessed be our savior has returned. Thank you, Mr. Faker. Oh, yes, sir. And it was the Faker show in that mid lane, the way that he was playing, the, the you know attention that he's absorbing some of these times. He didn't like, even have to play that well. And some of the times it looks just the same as when, you know, Faker's getting caught out, just looks like Poby being caught up. The difference is Faker finds a way to survive and then the rest of the team is collapsing in to capitalize on it. Just seems to be the way that it is. That shot calling coming through Faker back with T1, T1 back comfortably in the top 20 list. And listen again, it's Kwang Dong. You're not going to be fully, feeling fully confident for this squad until playoffs roll around. But I'll tell you, whoever matches up against T1 in round one, they would have been hoping it was Poby they were matching up against, not Faker. Doesn't seem like that's going to be the case. Obviously, most importantly, hope that he's actually fully healthy since he has returned to this lineup. Wishing him the best as everybody else is. Two LCS squads that got the bye, Golden Guardians and Cloud9. I mean, they're sitting put. Unless they have an incredibly dominant playoff run, still going to be hard to crack the top 10 for either of them. I'm thinking about some of the things that we have seen creep into this meta. The conversation, of course, about Aatrox and that top side is going to be an interesting one. More so, I think, looking at things like Aatrox and Camille for Cloud9 with Fudge in that top side can be some champions that he might be able to take advantage of uh, compared to someone like Licorice. But again, hey, doubting Licorice, what did that get us? The level up of licorice throughout summer for the Golden Guardians. So feeling positive about that when these two teams have certainly shown some of that strength. And the other pick is the Zarek. We saw that one in the T1 Kwangdong Freak series. Would love to see some Zarek for Gory and showcase what he can do with four skill shots. Mm, love me some of that. I love to see when you actually have to land your abilities because one... You get guys popping off, and two, you get the incredible lowlights of somebody whiffing every single ability. Those are maybe some of my favorite things to see. And you know what? If we get a Zareth in an LCS playoff series, you got a good chance you might see both ends of that spectrum. <laughs> From the same guy in the same game. <laughs>
just the way it goes. But right now, Cloud9, Golden Guardians, going to be no real movement from them, of course, until we see them in their playoff match. Lastly, on this board, OMG gets bumped out for somebody else who's actually been playing. They will not be in the gauntlet, so their season's done. EDG, we're still waiting in that winner side of the regional finals to see, but man, they're going to have their work cut out for them when you see these squads that are slowly getting eliminated from the LPL playoffs. Scary. Very scary. And that's just the world of the LPL. When you're living at that type of level, that type of record, you get dropped down. The bigger fish are always waiting for them, but still you got the secret sauce. Mr. EDG, Mr. Uzi, the president in the bottom lane is, of course, something to keep track of. Yes, talking about Aatrox, talking about Zareth, top lane, mid lane picks. Still looking in that bot lane at the Kaisa and the Zaya, two fantastic ones for Mr. Uzi. Just needing that Sivir buff or maybe a Lucian one as well for him. We know he can play pretty much any. 80 carry in the meta. Top 10 team I alluded to, Hanwha Life gets the bump. They are now right behind D+. Some people might even put them ahead. They have just been cruising business as usual since Mr. G Riz came in, beaten up on every lower tier LCK team and being competitive at the very least against some of the best teams in Korea. Oh boy, and it must have looked like he's just been served gray, non-colored food all year round and then enter this week and Kingin returns to this feast, this colorful meal of Aatrox in the top lane being giga busted, the world champion Aatrox. This is going to be one of the things to keep track of for this team is that power up in the top side for those type of champions. Aatrox, Camille, what type of dueling you can do, that is gonna be something to keep an eye on with this Hanwha Life team, but we know the power still has to come from elsewhere and that power has been supplied a lot by Viper in the bottom lane. And I think now it's also time to start going. We need consistent power coming through from Mr. Zeka in the mid lane as well. And, you know, they got the blessing of Scout. Scout said, love to see Viper at Worlds, you know, the reunion. So blessing from the LPL MVP only going to help you in your summer playoff run. Uh, D plus, despite having one more loss, played one more game than Hanwha. Uh, it was anything but clean 2-0 against uh, Nongshim today. It was a very back and forth first game that they probably should have lost and a slower than you would have liked game two. But there's still... <sighs> This is the hardest team in the LCK for me to rank as D+, because you see one series and you're ready to dub them a top three team, and then you see another series and you go, can they win a playoff series? They are so up and down. They really are, and, and that is going to be the label that is just going to stick with this D+, Kia squad. This iteration is consistency because we don't get it from this team. We do see the top of the line plays. You see that potential, and you try to hang on to it, as that positive outlook on this team, whether it's because you're a fan of death or, you know, you think that this is the, the team that really could shake things up in that top tier of the LCK, whatever it is, you're not delivered on it every single time. There's no guarantee. And with some of these better teams in the LCK, you feel more comfortable with that type of guarantee. And it doesn't come through. And this type of series against Nongshim is a great example of that type of struggle, yet still having that power. D plus key. Down a spot, but still here comfortably is Weibo Gaming. They obviously didn't play games. They're eliminated. They're going to be in the regional finals, but that ceiling is always there because remember, the only team and the best record in the world against JDG. They're 2-0 against them. They're not going to play them again in the LPL this split, but the ceiling and potential is always there for Mr. Weibo. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Weibo Gaming, and you better be banking on it. If there was any team that we wanted to be talking about the changes in the top side, let's check in with the shy. I'm sure he would love. Does he play another... Aatrox? Oh. I'm sure this is a guy that can get it down and dirty with a giga busted Aatrox or Camille in the top side. Going to be things to keep track of for this Weibo team. But they kind of fall in a similar type of pattern as EDG. When you look at everything else, that is coming down from those LPL playoffs that is going to be in that gauntlet that you need to challenge in, even if you have that self-belief, even if you're banking on one of your players popping off, being that star, whether it's going to be Mr. The Shy in the top side, whether it's going to be Xiaohu, whether it's going to be Light, who's ever it's going to be, you still look at what's on that other side. And right now, it's going to be a matchup of the Titans no matter where it falls down in the LPL gauntlet. Two out of three. 
LEC titles, a berth at MSI, a quick 3-0 dominant run for G2 Esports. Still haven't booked a ticket to Worlds, but they have booked their highest ranking that we've seen in the summer split here at number seven. And we say it time and time again, this has got to be as high as they can go because you got top esports right ahead of them. But G2 right now, a class of their own in the LEC and look like the best form they've had the entire year. There is no possible level that we can raise what we have seen from G2 compared to whatever else has been delivered throughout the LEC and around the world to say, this is the G2 that is at their maximum yes you you were very right about that one the way that this team is playing right now looking from top to bottom things that continue just talked about d plus kia needing that consistency you want consistency go to mr yike in the jungle for g2 this rookie has stepped through and been that consistent player for the team didn't matter what the meta is whether it's tanks engages carry it doesn't matter my man is able to find the way to play and unlock the secrets for the rest of this G2 lineup. And when you've got players like Caps, Ansama, Broken Blade, when you've got your jungler operating at that type of level, unlocking the potential for these players, the ceiling is not going to be existent for you because you're rising all the way to the stars. They haven't booked that world spot yet. I think everyone would be completely shocked if they didn't because we want to see this level of G2 representing not just EU, but the West as a whole at an international event, at another international event. Still not enough to usurp that six spot from top esports. They lost to LNG. It was a close series. Just excited to see TES when the gauntlet rolls around. Yeah, and I think that that is going to be where they need to, you know, that's the last proving ground and last, you know, stop on the train for top esports at this point of the year and what they can do for us. Uh, it's disappointing when you look back on the on the playoff performance for top esports the way that it falls out in those back-to-back -back series still knowing what we have seen throughout this summer split and the type of potential and type of uh, heat that we have seen from players like rookie and jackie love down in that bottom lane you catch heat in one of these gauntlets you better believe that this is a team that can make that run wayward continues to be the big whoop question mark for this squad he'll have to step it up if they do want to book one of those tickets to the world championship top five entering the vip room has the biggest shakeup of the split partially because mainly these top five teams are the ones still playing in the lpl at the very least but genji gets bumped down not really because they did anything wrong they continue to you know have two zeros against everybody not in kt but it's because LNG came bursting back into the top five. A pair of losses for BLG means they get bumped out of the top two when LNG ascends into that top three as they book their ticket to finals. Oh my goodness. All aboard. Scouts trip to world. Scouts trip to the LPL finals. And it's not just Scout. The rest of the crew coming on and through for LNG. Yes, this is the big shakeup that we are alluding to in this top section in the VIP. You got players, teams like Gen G getting that bit of a bump where it is. You look at all the Gen G ones, still check marks across the board for all the good things. Unfortunately, you're picking up double check marks if you are a squad like LNG getting the wins that you did and a team like BLG having those consecutive losses. Yeah, you are going to slip up a little bit. We still are very convinced about your power level and what you can do and what type of challenge you will represent on the world stage. Of course, assuming that you do lock that type of spot up, this is going to be what we're looking at. And man, it is juicy looking at all these teams in the VIP. Yeah, and it's tricky for BLG. You're secretly rooting for your nemesis and JDG to win so that you clinch a spot. But at the same time, do you want to go to Worlds fresh off of two straight series losses? You might want to be tested and have to actually win another best of in the gauntlet. And if you're a team like BLG and you're still looking to find that edge, that difference that you can be at that equal point to your nemesis in JDG, Sure, you might welcome that type of challenge, that type of opportunity to test yourself and say, you know what, let's look back. Let's say that, you know, wipe our minds of the loss type of situation and say, hey, we, we've slammed all these guys, every single one of these teams all the way through that LPL split. Let's just channel that again for this last time. You'd have to lose 
two more series in a row to not qualify for Worlds, even if they don't go off of points. And if you lose four consecutive best of fives, hate to break it to you, you don't deserve to go to Worlds at that point. Yeah, and, and that's going to be the tough reality. And it's one of those ones where, again, you can look at the side of cheering for JDG to try and lock up that all guaranteed type of spot, or you do want that challenge of betting on yourself and taking that risk obviously quite a consequence if you do fall out of this one if you are a team like dlg all that work for nothing i don't think that that's going to be the case because i think as you've heard us talk many times about that eight trucks so those dominant bruisers in that top side i think we got a player on blg named mr gigabin that is going to be quite excited to see that him and the shy have both been saying Thank God, finally, we can play some carries in the top lane and pop off on them. Uh, but despite the slip-up for BLG, it's not LNG who takes that two-spot. KT Rolster get the bump. Highest they've been on this list, and absolutely deservedly so in that two-spot. Oh my goodness. How many weeks did it take for us to slam in a beautiful one two of lpl lck finally no longer the double not t1 not gen g K it is the kt roaster coaster coming on in through at the station very very happy for this team to get this type of acknowledgement to continue this consistency that we have seen from them this split bdd keen gonna get one of these nice little buffs in the top side i know he's a very well known Aatrox enjoyer in the LCK. And then of course, I can't stop talking about aiming and Lahens. They are certainly one of, one of, if not the biggest X factors for this KT team when they are popping off, when they're feeling themselves, having that hypey energy, that is absolutely when things are flowing to a different level for KT. And when things are flowing for KT, who's the who's the river master? Who's the one controlling that flow? It's the Cuz, Cuz Lightyear in the jungle, my man. Love seeing him play well. And yeah, aiming in the hands. Listen, Guma, Pays are all great, but you combine the bot lane duo, KT's number one in the LCK right now as we head to worlds, towards that world's push. And KT, it's great. Only positive things to say, but... I don't know what you say about JDG at this point. I, LNG, you played a great five-game set against them last time, but current form JDG, now that they've leveled up a little bit, uh, I'm hard-pressed to see LNG taking it away because this JDG team right now, every squad around the world should be watching their games and going, my God, I don't want to draw them at Worlds. It'd be too disrespectful to, to LNG to say that this is just simply JDG's trophy to take. They just need to show up and dish out what they got. At the same time, it's almost disrespectful to JDG to try and say that anybody else is at their type of level because what we have seen, all this type of talk about everybody else in the VIP, it's ignoring the fact that JDG just swats away every contender, no matter who they are. And that contender, even their most consistent one in BLG, getting a healthy double slap out of there by JDG with the way that they played in, the, in that series against them. Man, oh man, how have we not, I don't think we've ever seen a team that is at this type of power level and hype heading towards their finals and of course Worlds. It's shades of uh, FPX a couple of years ago. It feels like even if they lose the final, you're still picking JDG to be the overall favorites. Obviously that ended terribly for that FPX, but don't have any reason to believe that would happen to this version of JDG. But that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beautiful people. As always, thank you for watching and we will catch you on that flippity flip.